What's up YouTube? So I've always been curious to learn more about the science and technology behind athletic gear and how your choice of gear can give you a competitive edge. As you're probably aware, Nike and Under Armour are two of many big brands that dominate the world of athletic apparel. So in this video, I attempt to conduct the scientific method in order to determine which between the two brands is better. So the scientific question for this video is, which shirt technology is better for running? Nike's dry fit or Under Armour's heat gear? My hypothesis going into this study is that I think Under Armour is gonna perform better than Nike. But before I proceed, I want you to leave a comment below which one you think is gonna do better in this study. All right, so with that being said, here are the methods for my little experiment. I will be running five miles in each shirt separately at maximum effort. I'm gonna do my absolute best to minimize any other variables and try to control everything else to be as consistent as possible. From the clothes that I wear to the temperature outside, and I'm gonna run the same exact route for both shirts, but obviously on different days. The data I'll be collecting is the time it takes for me to complete that five mile run, again, at maximum effort. And I'm also gonna measure the weight of my shirt before and after my runs. This is the best way I could think of to measure fluid retention and moisture wicking features of the shirt. My goal with this study is to try to determine which of the two technologies will give me a competitive edge in running. And I really wanna try to back it up with numbers and data. So with that being said, I'm going to conduct the experiment and I'll meet you back in a bit. Dang, that sun's bright. So for today's experiment, I'll be running in the Nike dry fit shirt. I'm out here at my lake near my house, which is a five mile loop. So I'll give you the update once I'm finished on how the results go. All right, so some final thoughts after that five mile run. Just finished my Nike shirt run. The torso area actually feels really refreshing still. I don't feel soaked in my sweat at all. Just a little moisture in the pits. Otherwise, again, I feel really good in the torso area. Really didn't sweat that much on my shirt, to be honest. Again, refer to the weight scale for the numbers, but otherwise I had a pretty good run. Just some other notes with this run. It was a little breeze that kicked up towards the second, third of the run, which actually also helped. Made the run a little more refreshing also, so that could play a factor in these results here. Tune in for the next segment with the Under Armour shirt. All right, this is part two of the challenge. Today, I'm gonna to be running in my Under Armour shirt. So I'll give you the update once I'm done with the run. All right, just finished my Under Armour run, Under Armour T. Uh, pretty tired. Again, got the headband on, same get up from start to finish. I feel pretty good in this shirt, actually. I think the t-shirt weighs a little, just a tiny bit heavier than the Nike shirt to begin with. I think overall, I did feel a little bit better in this shirt compared to the Nike one from what I remember. Uh, to be honest, I haven't calculated the run yet. I just recorded the stop time and the finish time, so I'm gonna calculate that in a second. But again, just some other notes. I also had a little breeze that kicked in around the half way mark, which is like two, two and a half mile mark, which helped. Uh, overall, again, I felt a little better in this shirt. The BO in the shirt really isn't as bad as the Nike one. For some reason, after the Nike shirt run, I felt like it smelled pretty bad. Uh, but this shirt didn't really have that much of a problem. Uh, I still feel pretty cool, just a little moisture in the pits. But otherwise, it was, uh, I felt I did better on this one, I think. Uh, but let's look at the numbers and check out the results. All right, so now I'm back at the studio, just collected the data and the results. So let's discuss them, shall we? So I'm gonna put the table of the results right here next to me, so feel free to follow along. But let's talk about the Nike shirt first. So as you can see with my Nike shirt, I completed my five mile run in 51 minutes and 32 seconds. The weight increase or the sweat retention of the shirt after the run was 0 0.006 pounds or two grams or 0.14 ounces. Just speaking subjectively, I actually felt pretty good in the Nike shirt. I mentioned earlier that I didn't feel too soaked in sweat or anything like that. In fact, I felt pretty well ventilated. Maybe a little moisture in the pits in the back, but aside from that, the shirt really didn't feel any heavier really than when I first started running. One note to make that doesn't really relate to performance, but the shirt did retain some uh, body odor. <laughs> it really smelled kind of bad after, and I really don't know why, so that threw me off a little bit. But again, that doesn't really affect performance, I don't think. All right, now let's quickly discuss the Under Armour shirt. So check out the numbers here, but with the Under Armour shirt, I was able to complete my run in 51 minutes and 19 seconds. That is actually 13 seconds faster than when I wore my Nike shirt. 
So I was surprised as to how close I came between the two shirts. And I really don't know if 13 seconds is considered a significant difference. It's quite negligible in my opinion, but at the same time, when it comes to running, I guess every second counts, right? In terms of the weight of the shirt, it actually started off a tiny bit heavier than the Nike shirt, but after the run, the overall weight retention or sweat increase of the shirt was a little less. The numbers here are 0 0.002 pounds, or one gram, or 0 0.04 ounces of an increase after the run. Subjectively speaking with the Under Armour shirt, I actually felt really good with that run. In fact, there was some reason that I felt a little better during that run than I did with the Nike shirt, but to be honest, I can't really pinpoint why. Really, with these numbers, you can't feel that increase in wa uh, water weight on the shirt after. Both shirts, again, ventilated me very well, and I really felt cool throughout my five mile run with both shirts. Again, going to the random note about the body odor and the smell, the Under Armour shirt did not give me that problem as much for some reason. It didn't smell as bad for some reason after the run than compared to the Nike shirt. Just a random thought. All right, so this is the moment y'all been waiting for, and that is the final conclusion and the results. Based on the data that has been collected from this study, the superior brand is the Under Armour Heat Gear shirt. So I'm gonna put the table over here one more time, comparing the two brands side by side. And as you can see, the Under Armour shirt beat the Nike shirt by 13 whooping seconds for the five mile run. The Under Armour shirt also beat Nike in the category of sweat retention and uh, shirt weight, in which again, it increased by a smaller amount of 0 0.002 pounds or the other converted metrics as seen over there. Subjectively, I didn't really feel a big difference between the two shirts. Both shirts did the job, ventilated me well. I didn't feel too sweaty or too weighed down afterwards. Only the smell thing was a big difference between the two brands, but otherwise I didn't really feel that one shirt made me run that much faster or anything like that. So of course with my study, there were different uncontrollable factors and variables that might have affected my results. I think the biggest factor is temperature outside. I did my best to run in 70 to 73 degree weather with both shirts, which I did, but there's obviously factors like how much sun you get, the humidity, the wind factor, and those variables I couldn't measure or control, so that might have affected the results. Also something to note, I did not calculate or carb load or measure how much I had to eat the night before. Obviously carb loading plays a big role in running performance the next day. I did not measure that, so I don't remember what I ate. <laughs> so who knows if that might have played a bigger role in my 13 second differential or not. Another thing to note is obviously I'm just one person and I only did one trial of each shirt. These results would be much more valuable if I did several trials or if I had a larger sample size. A lot of people doing the same exact study and accumulating all these numbers and getting a solid average between all these different trials just to have much more definitive values. One more thing to keep in mind is that this study only looks at five mile running specifically. These results by no means should be implied to other sports like football, basketball, tennis, nor should it be applied to very short sprints or even longer distance running. This study is very specific to five mile runs and so take the results with a grain of salt. You have totally different sports for totally different outcomes. So if you have any feedback on how I could have made the study better, please leave them in the comments below. I wanna take this opportunity to give a shout out to the homie Vince from Life with Vince Liu. He's been a huge inspiration for both my YouTube and my fitness journey, so be sure to check out his channel if you haven't yet. I also wanna give a general shout out to all the runners and fitness channels that have been supporting me. And it's actually all you guys that inspired me to make this video here. All your hard work, running, and determination really drove me to make this kind of video and to run with you guys too. So make sure you comment your channels below so everyone can find you guys. When it comes to these kind of studies or reviews, I try to make things as data-driven and objective as possible. It's easy to listen to somebody and just hear them say that, oh, it felt good for them. Oh, it helped them do better here, but how, right? Uh, again, just looking at numbers and looking at some data really helps drive in uh, an argument, I feel like. And so that's why I'm doing this is, you know, I, you can hear me say all this stuff about how I feel, but why does that matter unless you have the numbers to back it up? Science. So when it comes to these kind of reviews or studies, 
uh, you have both subjective and objective arguments, right? Subjective is you hear somebody tell their side of the story. What do they feel? What do they think? Objective is very hard data and number driven. I think it's important when you're researching something, in this case like a product, you really look at both sides, right? You listen to what a lot of people have to say about something, but it also helps if you have some sort of numbers to back up an argument. It just makes an argument that much stronger. So in the end, what I hope you take away from this is anytime you're researching a product, don't just listen to one or two people. Listen to a lot of people and what they have to say, but also try to find some numbers or some sort of scientific research to back something up. Don't just trust the biggest influencer on the internet. Don't just Google the first thing you look up and trust that that's the best thing. Do your due diligence and your due research and hopefully that'll help you make the best decision when it comes to, in this case, buying a product. So I really do hope you found this video helpful and informative. If there's any other athletic gear or technologies that you want me to review, leave them in the comments below. Again, my goal for this channel is to create content on style and sneakers, but also apply a little science in there. And again, the science behind all of this just really intrigues me, but I'm also trying to get my credibility up. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more. Also, check out these two videos here and here of my previous product reviews. So if you're interested, please check those out. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.